Hello geometry students. I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. Today we're going to be looking a little bit deeper into some of the vocabulary that goes along with solids. Okay, specifically we're going to be looking at types of solids today and our objective is to learn the naming system for types of solids. Please copy down the title and the objective and anytime you need more time, press pause and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Let's get started. Okay, now last time we said that there were many properties to go along with solids. And we said since the solids do vary uh, somewhat, it's difficult to come, uh, come up with terms that are specific to all solids. But the naming system is pretty uniform. Okay, so the properties that we can find about the solids are going to be uh, what we're going to need in order to be able to name them. Okay, so again, we're going to have some vocabulary that we're going to need to get committed to memory. If you have not yet learned uh, the vocabulary from yesterday, uh, then that is going to need to be a priority. Now, uh, a lot of what we're going to be doing today is going to come back to information about the bases. Okay, so recall that we spent some time talking about bases and how to locate them in the figures. Now, the number of bases as well as the shapes of those bases are going to give us a lot of the information that we're going to need in order to come up with the name for that solid. Now, of course, remember that our solids, depending on how they are constructed, they may have two bases, they may have one base, or they may not have any bases at all. All right. Now, you're going to have heard a lot of this vocabulary before, so hopefully this will be a little bit of a review. The first term we are looking at is the term prism. Now, a prism is a solid that has two parallel congruent sides that we can call bases. So obviously there are plenty of potential examples for what prisms might be or what they might look at, um, what they might have or look like. Okay, the ki uh, critical thing, the key is that in all cases there will be two parallel congruent sides that can be termed as bases. Okay. Now another giveaway, something to watch for on a shape in order to decide it is a prism, is the fact that prisms are going to be built out of many rectangles. Now they can have some other shapes other than rectangles in them, but the rectangles will constitute all of the lateral faces. So the only shapes or the only sides of the prisms that will not be rectangles will possibly be their bases. And generally speaking, we not, uh, don't just call any prism a prism. It is also identified by what type of shape the bases are. Okay, so if you are looking at the three shapes that you have from above, okay, we, they are all prisms because they fit the definition of having two parallel congruent sides. Okay, but they are more specifically, the guy on the left, his bases are rectangles. Okay. And the one in the middle, his bases are triangles. The one on the right side has bases that are pentagons. Okay, so we identify that information along with their names. Okay, so the guy on the left isn't just a prism, it is a rectangular prism. The guy in the middle is a, not just a prism, it's a triangular prism. And the one on the right would be a pentagonal prism. Now you may argue that the shape on the left, that the left side and the right side of it, that those sides might in fact be squares, not rectangles. So would you not call it a square prism? We'll actually answer that here in a little while. Okay, but typically the term rectangular is used rather than square. Now there are some more specialized types of prisms. Okay, and this deals in particular with what happens if its base is not a polygon at all. If a prism were to have circular bases, 
Now, I'm sure you are well familiar with what this shape is termed. Okay, It is a prism because it has two parallel congruent sides that we can call its bases. It just so happens that its bases are circles. Now, we wouldn't call it a circular prism. It has a special name, and I'm sure you already know the special name is cylinder. Now back to the discussion about a rectangular prism that has squares for its bases. Now we said that if it just had uh, two sides that were squares, we would go ahead and call it a rectangular prism. But what happens if all of the sides of the rectangular prism are squares? If that's the case, if a prism has squares for all of its sides, Okay, we don't call that one a rectangular prism anymore. As I'm sure you're already aware, we call that one a cube. Now that uh, kind of takes care of the prisms, the shapes that have two sides uh, that are congruent and parallel, to what happens if we only have one base. Okay, we, these are what we classify as the pyramids pyramid is a solid that has only one base. Now, of course, remember that a pyramid uh, is going to have its one base, but across from that base will be a pointed location on the solid that we call the vertex. Okay, so here are several examples of pyramids because, again, they have one shape uh, that is, or one side, pardon me, that is across from this pointed location called the vertex. Okay. And an extra thing that you can watch out for, uh, in addition to watching for the vertex, is the presence of a lot of triangles. The lateral faces of your pyramids are going to be triangles. Okay, So with the prisms, the lateral faces were all rectangular, and in the uh, pyramids, the lateral faces will all be triangular. Now, just like with the prisms, we have a little bit of a specialized naming system, and it will once again involve the shape of the base. Okay, so in the three shapes you're looking at up there, they are obviously all pyramids. Okay, but we wouldn't just call them pyramid, pyramid, and pyramid. Okay, we would name the shape of the base. The one on the left is a pentagon for its base. The one in the middle is a triangle for its base. The one in, on the right is a rectangle for its base. So we would say that they are a pentagonal pyramid, triangular pyramid, and rectangular pyramid. Now, once again, some people would argue that the base on the right is a square, not just a rectangle. So shouldn't it be called a square pyramid? Again, the language uh, that they have selected over the years for this is to call it rectangular rather than square. Now, just like with pyra uh, the prisms, there is a more specialized type of pyramid. And once again, this would deal with the possibility that our pyramid did not have a polygon as its base, like in the case of a circle. If a pyramid were to have a circular base, we wouldn't call it a pyramid anymore. It's not a circular pyramid. And I'm sure you already know this is a cone. Well, that takes care of the uh, pyramids. So we've, we've talked about the shapes that have two bases. We've now finished talking about the shapes that have one base. Now the only thing really for us to deal with is the possibility of no bases at all. Okay, so there's one more solid we will discuss. Remember from last time, we may have figures with no base. Okay, and as I am sure, it's not a ball or anything like that. I'm sure you know it is technically a sphere. Now, spheres are not the only types of shapes that do not have bases, okay? But in basic geometry, this is the only one that we will get anywhere close to. Okay, so the other ones are more of pre-calculus and calculus issues. So the only one you're responsible to know for this year is the sphere. Okay, that's pretty much it. So we just have some vocabulary. Uh, if I were you, I would be uh, preparing myself for the possibility of a vocabulary quiz, just like any other time where we pick up a whole bunch of new vocabulary at once. It's going to be very important for us to get that vocabulary learned. So I would be suspicious of the possibility of a quiz, and uh, I would study accordingly. 
I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of, and I will see you in class.